Eventually, through following the squiggle, she says, she managed to ring the number. And when the guy, he must have said something on the other end, like, hello, all she heard, she said, when he picked the phone up was, woof, 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 woof. And then she said, I, I tried to say to him, um, hey, this is Jill, I'm in trouble. And all she heard herself say was, woof, 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 woof. Because the vibration was not being decoded by the left brain, the language part, into words that we can um, understand. And what the system wants to do is to put these firewalls up called education, science, uh, politics, media, peer pressure, to keep the right brain out of it. And this is fundamental because uh, these things are all part of the defense mechanism keeping us in left brain reality and out of right brain infinity. Now some people, they call them um, autistic savants, like this man Stephen Wilshire. They access the right brain potential in ways that other people don't. And this is why they're capable of fantastic achievements. This guy, Stephen Wiltshire, was taken up in a helicopter over London by the BBC for half an hour with nothing except his eyes and then came down and drew London from the air with incredible um, accuracy. Why? Because he was accessing that infinite potential that left brain people, most of people in the world don't. This guy, Daniel Tammet, another autistic savant, has, has, has again achieved incredible things because um, he was challenged once to learn Icelandic in a week and it's an incredibly difficult language to learn. I mean, none of the media were, dis were, were, were using on their news reading, uh, were using the real name of that volcano in Iceland, were, were they? Because they could bloody pronounce it. This guy went back on television a week later speaking Icelandic. And his Icelandic teacher said, he's not human. Yes, he is. It's the human that we once were and will be again. When this suppression of our potential and our infinite possibility is brought to an end and this shite stops. We worship the intellect. Oh, he's got a great mind. Oh, he did this at Oxford. Oh, he's gone to Harvard. Mind is such a low level of awareness. It's supposed to be a vehicle for experiencing this reality, a servant of consciousness. It's become our master. It's become something to worship. And that's the isolated intellect. That's the isolated intellect. And so we reach a point this fork in the road is, are we going to be consciousness or mind? Are we going to be all that is or little me? It's not really free your mind, it's free yourself from mind. That's why society is structured to completely engross us and swamp us in things to occupy our mind. Open your mind, become all that is. Infinite love is the only truth, everything else is illusion. What is infinite love? All possibility. Infinite possibility. Choice between the head, thinking, intellect and the heart, knowing wider consciousness. Then we start to access this wider information and see the world from a completely different level. We then start to access, once we get out of mind, all these other realities that are there to be accessed and perceived and to glean insight and information from that have been denied by being encloseted and enclosed in mind. As William Blake said, if the doors of perception were cleansed, everything would appear to man as it is, infinite. The control system's game is not to have that cleanse happen. René Descartes, the French uh, mathematician and philosopher, defining who we are said, I think, therefore I am. I would update that on the body computer level and say, I compute, therefore I am. 
But beyond that, in the realms of consciousness, it is simply I am, therefore I am. I am all that is, has been, and ever will be. And this multi-leveled conspiracy is there to keep that knowledge from us, to hold us in little me mental states, so a tiny few can control billions. Without this knowledge, we cannot understand the conspiracy and how it works. And the question is, who's behind it? See, they're hiding already. Who's behind it? And that's what we'll get to in the next section, which will start in uh, 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you. next section takes us from that information about reality and starts to relate it to the situation we find ourselves in. There are 20 years between these two photographs and in that time really amazing things have happened. So many people have gone from that to that and it's an exponential curve that's gathering pace all the time. And people are starting to see what is increasingly there that we are watching the unfolding imposition of a fascist global state or communist global state. They're the same in either, either way. I'm sure people in fascist Germany and people in Stalinist uh, Russia thought there was a big difference between the worlds that they lived in. Different names for the same basic control system. But I would suggest that if we stay only at the level of the five senses, only at the level of the world we see banking scams, manipulated wars, Orwellian imposition, then we're not going to get truly what is going on. Because I say this, look at it. This world has been changing and is changing so rapidly in terms of all different aspects of this control system, the way they manipulate education, manipulate wars, put in the people they want as presidents, give us all this shite through food and drink, control the media, manufacture the global warming scam, Big Pharma, and 9-11 and all that stuff. And it's coming in in a, such a coordinated way. So if we are going to uh, think that this situation that we're seeing unfold 
goes back to a few men and women in dark suits or whatever sitting round a table saying what's our next move we are clearly massively missing the point and the vast majority of people who over the last few years have started investigating this they will not go any further they will not go any further because a their belief systems won't let them often their religious belief system but also they are fearing what other people will think about them if they go into some of these areas i'm going to go into now what people make of it is up to them my right to say it is up to me so yes it's not just people sitting around a table somewhere in the world discussing the next move there's the level where we see this unfolding in the news and and what have you then there's this other dimensional non-human level to look at as i will in this section then there's the level of the nature of reality which i've introduced already and then there's this whole stuff about the moon which i'll get into in this section too and the rabbit hole doesn't end there it goes deeper and deeper and deeper and the deeper you go into the rabbit hole the more we understand what the game is the more we can change the game and it's all about the control and programming of perception that's the only way the few and it is a few compared with the global population that the billions can be controlled manipulating how we interact with reality keeping from us that we are consciousness putting us in these bubbles of our sense of limitation and i can't manipulating the way we decode reality and therefore making us see the world as the control system wants us to see it that's the basis of all of it going through the day because that's the basis of all of it going through the whole conspiracy so yes of course on one level it does manifest as dark suits sitting round a table discussing the next move but that's still the play out world of this conspiracy it's not its origin it goes beyond them into the advisers in the shadows the mandelsons in this country peter mandelson if he's not manipulating it gets withdrawal symptoms that man and into the ram emanuels ditto in america the controller handler of barack obama it goes into deeper levels beyond them deep in the hidden secret society network and eventually it goes out of this dimension and that's where this whole thing is really coming from beyond the frequency range of visible light and it involves non-human entities some of them people call the greys the main ones i would say and have been saying for a long long time take a reptilian form they operate outside they can come into visible light but in terms of the reptilian uh part of this they can't stay here for that long so people say why don't they just come and take over because they can't or the wood they can come for so long but their vibrational uh, difference incompatibility means they have to uh leave they can't stay for long although there are technological ways they can stay for longer and they operate outside visible light and they manipulate this reality through bloodlines interbreeding bloodlines that um, I'll come to and we call them the illuminati families so we operate with invisible light but outside of that sharing the same space is infinite other worlds and realities and if a so-called ufo comes into this reality because it's coming into visible light from where we cannot decode it just seems to appear out of flipping nowhere because what what it's done it hasn't actually come in it's just changed its vibrational state to resonate with invisible light and it's like it came out of nowhere and then how often do you see it honestly mate there was this bloody ufo and it disappeared just in front of me eyes you what you are mate you on the pop or what what it's done is increased its vibrational resonance to go be out on the on visible light therefore to the observer it disappears and disappeared at all it's left visible light and this range of frequency we call our world is being manipulated from vibrational frequencies beyond it and satanism is a network within visible light that interacts with these reptilian entities in various ways I'll get to before the end of the day